This new M4Q battery charger from Toolkit RC has got a couple of neat tricks up its sleeve. Just like the M4AC charger that I reviewed recently, it's got its own internal power supply. In this case, it's 100 watts. Most chargers these days require some sort of external DC power source. Now, that could be another battery when you're out in the field or a suitable DC power supply, something like this that you plug into the mains outlet when you're at home. So this, just like the M4AC, is very convenient to use because you can just plug it in a wall socket. It also solves the problem of safely parallel charging batteries so you can get out flying again without having to hang around for too long waiting for them all to charge up. If you want to charge more than one battery at a time with one of these small chargers, you'll need a balance board something like this and you'll have to sit down and work out all the correct current settings and make sure all the batteries that you're charging are identical and at a very similar level of charge or, or discharge. If you don't you could end up destroying your batteries or worse still start a small inferno. With this M4Q quad smart charger you can charge four batteries at the same time truly in parallel. They don't even have to be in the same level of discharge. They can even be different cell counts, 2S, 3S, 4S, or even different cell chemistries. Now, dual chargers are fairly common, but a four channel charger at this sort of price is a real surprise. It's sort of like having four separate battery chargers all in one box that's fantastically easy to use. Hello, and welcome to the Whirly Black channel. If you've watched my channel before, you'll know I've reviewed pretty much all of Toolkit RC's chargers, and this M6D is currently my daily charger. But I need to power it from my 24 volt 100 amp DC power supply when I'm at home. And when I'm out in the field, I use this old 10 amp hour LiPo. Now, this new M4Q charger, and I guess the Q stands for quad, is great because it not only is it a quad charger you can just plug it into a mains outlet which is so convenient when you're at home and you can plug it into a DC power supply as well if you want to get the most power out of it but I'll talk about that a bit later now this is very similar to the M6D it's the same type of box but obviously it's a bit bigger remember this has got a mains power supply in it as well as four charging circuits so it's going to be bigger but not too much. In fact, this is just as easy to throw in your flight bag and it's only 450 grams. And the price is 55 pounds in the UK, which is around $70 elsewhere. And I think that is remarkably good value for money for a quad charger. On the back here, you've got the mains input, which auto switches between 110 and 240 volts. And there's a DC input using an XT60 which is rated at 10 to 18 volts at a maximum of 20 amps. I mean, basically, the internal power supply is 100 watts. And if you power this off 18 volts DC and 20 amps, this is good for 200 watts charging power. Oh, there's also a little micro USB up here for doing firmware updates. Now the basic layout of this is just like the M60, but it's just bigger and there's four of them. You get the same scroll wheel and the channel change button up here, which is like an escape key as well. And I think this is just about the best scroll wheel selector around at the moment, but that comes down to personal choice. It makes the selection pretty positive, I think, and you just Click it to select, nice and easy. And along the front here, you've got the four charging ports. Each one's got an XT60 and a balance plug for up to 4S. And you can get this with XT30 connectors as well if you want, but it's easy enough to make yourself up some adapters and then you can mix and match whatever you want on here. And this three inch IPS display is fantastic. It's 480 by 320 pixels with a very good 120 degree viewing angle. Not measured it, but it looks pretty good. And like the M6D, it's really easy to read outdoors in the sunshine. And using this 
is exactly the same as the M60. So if you've got one of those, you'll be very familiar with this. Let's plug a battery in and see what we've got. It's just a random one I've picked up off the shelf. I've got no idea what state of charge is. Okay. So along the top here, we have got the status of the input. That's the internal power supply voltage, current, watts, and that's showing the internal temperature on that little icon there is showing you where the fans on but you'll hear it when it starts up and then you've got a panel for each of the channels for each of the channels one two three and four you've got one two three and four and you just select round them using the channel select switch so this is like four separate chargers all independent of each other all in one box so to charge you just cycle round the channel that you want and I'll pick channel one because this is in channel one here and then you select it with the scroll wheel then you can choose the battery type so you've got a choice of lipo Let's see what you've got just select high voltage lipo lithium ion and so on uh, you can choose the cell count or you can just leave it on auto and it'll figure it out for itself Uh, the mode, you've got a choice of charge and storage charge, but we're going to charge this. The end voltage, I've set to 4.2, which is what you need for a LiPo, but if you select that, you can choose whatever you like. And then you can choose the charge current. I've got this set to 1.3 amps, but you can choose whatever you like and whatever is appropriate. So we go back to 1.3. There we go, start charging, just select start, and we're off. So you can see here, this is charging uh, LiPo 4S, and we have got 15.88 volts, and the current charge is 1.3 amps. This is the accumulated charge down here, and then, if I switch it over to that, this shows you the individual volts on each cell. And the little red flashing flag here, flashing between red and grey, just shows you how hard the balance circuit is working. When it's red, it's doing its work. When it's grey, it's settled down. And if you flick over on the scroll wheel, this will eventually show you the internal resistance of each cell. And up there is the charge time. It's all so easy to use. And this M4Q is using the same revised balance circuit Toolkit RC introduced on the M6D and more recently included on the M6 version 2. And according to the specs, it's accurate to less than 5 millivolts. Now, I've been using this all week and it's been perfect and charges to the correct end voltage across each cell. It's fantastic and it's just great value. Now, I've been through this in other videos, but people still seem to get very confused about power ratings on these multi-channel chargers. You've got to remember, you can't get more power out of this than you put in. The built-in AC power supply on this is rated at 100 watts. So if you want to charge, say, I don't know, I've got these four 1300 milliamp hour batteries. If I wanted to charge all of these at the same time at 1C, will this cope? Well, using Watt's law, which is power equals volts times current, each battery, each one of these, is going to need 1.3 amps times 16.8 volts, which is 21.84 watts. And since each of these channels on here is rated at 25 watts when it's powered off the wall socket, that will be fine. So you'll be able to charge all these at 1C with no problem. But if you're totally deranged and decide to charge at 2C, that's 2.6 amps, you've doubled the power to 43, nearly 44 volts, 44 watts. And the internal supply on here just simply can't cope with that. It'll work, 
but the current it delivers to each charging circuit won't be 2.6 amps because it simply can't deliver it. And this fan on the back will be buzzing away trying to keep things cool. If you want to charge at 2.6 amps, you'll need to use an external 18 volt, 20 amp DC power supply to power this. And when you do that, the input is rated at 200 watts. So you've got a 200 watt charger. You've just got to do your sums before you start charging. So the thing to remember is if you power this from an external DC supply using 80 volts at 20 amps, this is spec'd at 50 watts for each channel. If you use the internal AC power supply that's on here, each channel is rated at 25 watts. And this is my whole point really. This is capable of charging what you need, not what you think you must have. And naysayers may think, ah, it's only 25 watts a channel, that's rubbish. But this will charge these four 1300 milliamp hour LiPos truly in parallel at 1C using the internal supply. And if you're charging at much more than 1C, you're not gonna get so many charge cycles out of each of these. It's money down the drain. So here's a few happy little batteries charging away, all independent of each other. Uh, this one over here is a 300 milliamp hour lithium ion cell. And this is a 650 milliamp LiPo as a 1300 milliamp hour LiPo and this guy here is a 1550 LiPo. One last thing you need to know, this only charges up to 4S batteries. Now you may think that's a bit of a restriction but I think it's a very smart decision by Toolkit RC. So if this was capable of charging 5 and 6S packs, not only is it going to need a bigger internal power supply, everything needs beefing up and that means it would need to be physically bigger and more importantly it would bump the price right up. I think they've hit the sweet spot with this. How many of us actually use a 5 and 6S packs on a regular basis? Only serious acro racers and maybe long range flyers use them. They cost loads more and about 95% of my fleet is under 4S. And talking to Toolkit RC that was their reasoning. Keeping a keen price point on this and appealing to the biggest audience was the plan. Having said all that, they are developing a larger 6S capable AC power charger, which is gonna be very interesting. And you can't fault them for the speed they're delivering excellent new products at the moment. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.